Hello, my name is Dawn Matthews. In today's lesson, we'll be looking at the impact of computers on our environment. In our modern world, computers are everywhere, millions of them. But what resources are we using to make these computers? How much energy do we use to run them? And what happens with computers that are old and broken? By the end of this lesson, you should be able to describe how the disposal of computers affect the environment and list ways in which people can attempt to limit the harmful effect of computers on the environment. The computer has become a very common item in our lives, just like a fridge, a car or a TV set. These items obviously do different things from a computer, but they also all differ from a computer in another important way. Watch this and see if you can spot what this important difference is. So my fridge finally packed up the other day after 20 years. I was actually quite impressed with how long it lasted. But it's not bad. I mean, the lifespan of, of home appliances is, is, is actually not bad. I've had my TV for like 20 years. Mm, so and I, I mean, it looks terrible, but you can still see stuff on it, you know? Some things seem to last forever nowadays. Like my car, I've also had it forever. Mm, but no, but no, I've got this computer. You, you remember when I brought the, bought the computer about two years ago? Now I need to get another one to upgrade it because I need better graphics and I need it to go a bit faster. I mean, I suppose that's technology. Technology really is moving so fast these days. Did you see that computers get replaced much quicker than other household items like cars, fridges and TVs? This is because the technology inside a computer goes out of date very quickly and must be replaced with a new model or upgraded every few years. The technology inside a car, on the other hand, changes very slowly and you can drive a car for many years before needing a new one. Now think about this. In the 1940s, there were only about 12 computers in the whole world. By 1993, the number of computers in the world was estimated at 155 million. They have also worked out that nearly 1 billion PCs were produced between the mid-70s and the year 2004. Now, that's a lot of computers that were built and then thrown away when they got too old. Many of us are not aware of the big impact that computers have on our environment. Computers affect our environment when they are made, used and when they are thrown away. Have you ever wondered about what goes into making a computer? Well, the short answer is quite a lot. Just think about this. In the mid-1990s, about 700 different materials and chemicals were used to make a computer. Also, about 33,000 litres of water were used for rinsing off the circuit boards. That's 33,000 litres of water per computer. Unfortunately, this water could not be recycled due to the presence of harmful chemicals. In 2004, a study found that it takes about 1.8 tons of raw material to make one standard desktop computer and monitor. This includes 240 kilograms of fossil fuels like coal and oil, 22 kilograms of chemicals and more than 1,300 liters of water. Believe it or not, the weight of all these raw materials is equal to a mid-sized car. That means it takes a carload of stuff to make one little PC. The thing is that most of these raw materials do not end up inside the computer. Instead, they become waste material. So, as more and more computers are manufactured, more and more waste material is generated. The problem is, where are we going to store all this waste material? Pressure from environmental groups is ensuring that governments recognize the effects of electronic waste on the environment. Governments around the world are setting up policies and laws about recycling and disposal of computer waste. Let's move on from the manufacturing of computers to the use of computers. How does using computers affect our environment? Well, it's quite obvious really. What do you need to run computers? monitors, printers, and fax machines. You need power. All these devices consume electricity, and it's the consumption of electricity which causes a problem for our environment.
This is because electricity is generated by large power stations. These power stations burn fossil fuels like coal as part of the process of generating electricity. Now, exactly what is it about burning fossil fuels that damages our environment? Well, when these fossil fuels are burned, carbon dioxide is released into the atmosphere. This carbon dioxide is one of the greenhouse gases. The increase in these greenhouse gases is thought to be causing global warming, which could have serious consequences for our planet. The pollution from power stations also affects the purity of the air we breathe and contributes to acid rain, which has already damaged buildings and many of the world's forests. So clearly, we should be trying to use less electricity. Are there any ways that we can do this and still use our computers? One way we can do this is to choose a computer that has been designed to use less electricity. So always look for a computer with the Energy Star logo. Computers which carry this logo use 60 to 80% less energy than other computers. This helps to conserve the energy sources on our planet and also reduces the emission of greenhouse gases. To check whether your computer is part of the Energy Star program, start up the computer and see if the Energy Star logo appears on the monitor. So, computer manufacturers can choose to make energy efficient computers and consumers can choose to buy these machines rather than others. You can also make energy saving choices when you use the computer. Nowadays, most operating systems allow us to configure energy saving settings on our computers. These settings will turn the computer off if they are not being used. For example, here we are at a school. Everyone is on a lunch break. That means that no one is going to be in the computer room for at least half an hour. But here we are inside the computer classroom. All the monitors are on and displaying the lock on screen. Can you see how these monitors are all using up electricity for no good purpose? Let's see what would happen if the students had turned on the power saving settings. Well, everyone is still on break, but now it looks like all the computers have been switched off. Actually, none of the computers are switched off. It's just that the monitors have gone to sleep. Monitors go to sleep when you choose one of the power saving modes which stop the monitor from displaying any visuals. All we have are black screens. But how do we get the monitors to turn back on when break is over? When a student moves the mouse, the computer realizes that someone wants to use the computer and the display is resumed. Setting the monitors to go to sleep means that while the learners spend half an hour on their lunch break, the computers in this room use less energy. Let's look at the control panel of a computer and see how to work with the power saving options. Click on Start. Then click on control panel. Find the power options icon. When you hold the mouse over the power options icon, it shows a note that says configures energy saving settings for your computer. Double click on power options. A dialog box will open. You can now set the computer to do one of these things. Turn off the monitor after a certain time. Turn off the hard drive after a certain time. Make the system go on standby after a certain time or make the system hibernate after a certain time. Now let's talk about each of these options. If you choose to turn off the monitor or the hard drive, you're telling power management to cut power to these devices if they are not used for a certain length of time. So I can set the computer to cut power to the monitor or the hard drive if there's no activity for, say, 5 minutes. The power management tools will send power back to these devices as soon as you start using the computer again. Standby is a low power state where devices such as the monitor and hard drive are turned off at the same time. In standby mode, 
power still runs to the computer's memory. So, when you want to use the computer again, it comes out of standby quickly and everything is exactly as you left it. So, if you'll be away from your computer for an hour or so, leave it in standby mode. If you're leaving the computer for a long time or overnight, leave it in hibernate mode. Or alternatively, shut down your computer completely. Now what if we learned about computers and energy use? There are hundreds of millions of computers on our planet, all using up energy in the form of electricity. The use of electricity contributes to the greenhouse gases which are released into our atmosphere. We can help to use less electricity by using the power saving settings on our computers. Many computers and monitors are dumped at municipal rubbish dumps. In the mid-1990s, it was estimated that there were 3.1 billion kilograms of computer waste worldwide. A February 2002 report by the Silicon Valley Toxics Coalition predicted that 500 million computers would become obsolete between 1997 and 2007. In April 2004, it was estimated that 12 million computers were dumped in landfills in the United States each year. So it looks like we are seriously littering our planet with computers. Apart from the litter, there's a specific problem with the dumping of computer monitors. Computer monitors contain a significant amount of lead. Lead makes up about one quarter of the weight of the monitor. When monitors are crushed at rubbish dumps, this lead is exposed and can leak into the groundwater. The danger of that is that our drinking water can become contaminated with lead. There are other harmful materials in computers, all of which end up in our environment when computer equipment is crushed. Three of these harmful materials are cadmium, chromium and mercury. All of these are heavy metals and toxic to human health. What can we do about the dumping of computers? Well, it's important to try and use a computer for as long as possible. Organizations that work to help preserve our environment all recommend that we think twice before we buy a new computer. If you do buy a new computer and the old one is still working, donate that computer to someone who can use it. You could place a notice at your local supermarket or find out from a neighbor if they know of anyone who needs a computer. Many businesses donate their used computers to schools. In this lesson, we've discussed an increase in the number of computers in the world, waste generation in the manufacturing of computers, energy consumption in the use of computers, and toxic materials in computers. Let's take a look at your task for today. Conduct a survey to find out the number of computers in your school that are not working. Write a letter to request a company to donate their old computers to your school and make a poster which describes things people can do to limit the harmful effects on our environment. Thanks for watching this lesson on computers and our environment. And as always, don't forget to visit our website for more information. Join me next time when we'll be talking about computer maintenance. Till then, goodbye.